Welcome back, everyone, to another Emerge Conflict, your weekly developer podcast. And I am fresh off of a plane. I can't even say developer correct because I was on so many flights yesterday, all the way from Finland to Dallas for some reason, Dallas to Seattle, Seattle, all the way back to my place here in Oregon. So three flights, way too long, <laughs> not too many layovers. But Frank, I'm awake. I swear you pinged me and I, I may have been sleeping. I was taking a little um, a little jet nap leg. Uh, in nap. the afternoon. Yeah, a little j- jet lag nap. Well, I did wake up at 5 a.m., which was not a great sign, seeing I was very, very tired last night. When you get to the mm-hmm. there's a everyone's been on long flights. If you've been on long flight. The, there's a point where you just kind of get dizzy and you're like, OK, I'm just like taking a shower, but like I'm dizzy. I can't even what's going on where I was standing up. I'm, am I going <laughs> to fall? I don't know. I should really just be in bed. And then, so I went to bed, you know, at like 11, which is really, you know, Finland time, like 10 or 9 a.m. So it's like we've been up for over 24 hours, you know, Helsinki time <laughs> and uh, went to bed and then I was up at 5 a.m. And I was like, oh, this is not going to be a great day. Uh, but it was good overall. But then Heather said, you should really take a nap. And I was like, I'll take a quick hour nap three hours later. So at least we had to record this podcast and it all worked out. I'm super happy. But Frank, it's good to be back talking to you. <laughs> I guess this is the uh, jet lag podcast now. We can just talk about our travel problems and all that kind of stuff. But no, it's great to have you back, James. Well, America always welcomes you back. And you, you have to go through Texas because Texas is so big. So anywhere you want to go in the United States, of course, you have to stop through Texas. But I, I'm sorry you're jet lagged, buddy. But hey, I'm sure you can talk about tech. You can always talk about tech. I don't care how jet lagged you are. I'm sure you can talk about tech. Well, I was really it's not really our main topic, but side topic before we get to the main topic is I am extremely interested and fascinated how uh, the technology bes- behind global entry has evolved, which is uh, how if you get back into America, it's kind of like TSA for international, you can sign up to do global entry, which is another program which includes TSA pre check. Now, for all intents and purposes, it is the fast pass lane to <laughs> uh, passport control when entering into America there. So in the in the early days, in the days of your Frank, um, this could be our topic as well, by the way, because now I'm really interested in this <laughs> and, and how this technology, well, it, it really has to do with AI. So like, so when I started out, mm-hmm. when you were doing global entry, you had to go in. So you had to go into an airport yeah. um, and you still have to do this or, or a global entry facility. And you had to get your fingerprints <laughs> scanned. They scanned, they, it was like, you're, yeah. you're get, going to jail and they would, they would scan your finger. Did you ever go through this process? I have. So I, I'm interested in hearing your version because I went through it just recently. So I, I we can con- compare and contrast technologies. Um, but so okay. far, so cool. far, we're on par. Uh, yes, they still require you to uh, scan all your fingerprints. It's quite a tedious pro- uh, process. Yes, you got it. And you have to go talk to a human being, ask mm-hmm. you a bunch of questions you have to fill out this survey of all of the places that you've ever traveled, like all this history. And yeah, you go into SeaTac or whatever airport, that's probably the easiest. And you go talk to a, an officer and they, they, they scan all your fingerprints, they take a few photos of you and bingo, bango, boom, you get your global entry, trusted traveler, your trusted traveler, your card, which you don't even need the card. I don't know why you have it. Maybe when you're going to Canada or back, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I had a slightly different process. Um, so way back when uh, I signed up for the global entry, because as you said, like it's the best way to get in now. Have you noticed that mm-hmm. at American airports, like all the automated machines are all just for people with the global entry now? Otherwise you have to go like deal yeah. with a human that didn't used to be. It used to be everyone could go use the machines like in airports around the world. Everyone can use the machines when the machines are working, obviously. (laughs) Um, But in the U.S., it's a lot of the machines are only available for global entry. So I wanted to do it. But even many, many years ago, I wanted to do it. And I filled out the form online and they said, Frank, you have to go to the airport. But you have to schedule um, uh, an interview that's like months out. I scheduled the interview months out. Months later, completely forgot I had the interview, and so never actually did it. But recently, on a trip, 
uh, had a few extra minutes at an airport and oddly enough, an airport in Ireland. So I got my U.S. global entry in an airport in Ireland because God bless the Irish. I don't know why. (laughs) Ireland is just great like that. (laughs) Yeah, no, when we were coming back from Ireland, Ireland it's really great because it's it's at least the only airport I know of. There's probably others, but pretty much they have a um, a, a, a TSA. It's not even TSA. It's border control, U.S. border control in Ireland. So That's like it. when you land in America, you've already <laughs> gone. You're, you're entering a small, tiny part of America in Ireland. It's weird. It's uh, it, just in the airport. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. I have never seen that. I've I've traveled the world to everyone. I've never seen that before because that yeah, they call it border whatever, a customs border or something, but it feels like an embassy because they're like there's American yeah. flags up and the floor's a little dirtier and you're like I must be in America, the floor's dirty. And uh yeah, so that's how it is. And it was funny um because I got through the line very quickly and they're like, "Hey, the global entry line over there is kind of short. If you just uh, go get in that global entry line, you won't ever have to do these lines yeah. ever again. And I'm like, that sounds like a wonderful oh, nice. thing. And so it was fun. Uh, I just went and stood in line. It took a little longer than I expected because although there was only one person I thought in front of me, it turned out that person was a family and had uh, mm. two adults and a child, all that had to get their, their little fingerprints <laughs> scanned and your <laughs> picture taken and the little baby didn't want to cooperate, but the baby's got global entry now. So they all got it and I got it all in Ireland. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. And they did your fingerprints. They did all that stuff. Yeah, they did all that stuff. They give you a short little interview, mostly just checking up. It felt like a credit report where they're just checking your old addresses and things like that. They yeah. asked me a few questions like, hmm, good question. I don't know. Um, had to think it through. It did come up kind of funny. They're like, oh, we see you applied and never followed through on that. What were you doing, Mr. Ooh. Suspicious person? I'm like, not suspicious, oh. just lazy. Just lazy. <laughs> just forget. Paul. It is hard. We, <laughs> yeah, for even for Heather, we had to like we had to like go either like I had to go to Blaine one time to get mine, and then we had to go to uh, PDX one time to get to get to get hers. It was is a is a pain. You got to go in. It's like you know, you only have to do it every five years or whatever, okay. ten years, whatever it is, which is great uh, to, to renew. The renewals you still have to schedule an appointment, but it's even faster. It's silly that you even have to go in. But <laughs> so when when you when we first did this. You're right. Like pretty much there was only machines uh, for global entry and you go talk to you have to go stand in line, do this stuff. So my whole thing was I was traveling so much for work and global entry was this, you know, blessing because yeah, you're just like fast passing and like doing the stuff. So you would go and there's these real just these machines for global entry. They look like big metal boxes <laughs> that are like Love old LCDs and all this stuff. And you go in and you had to scan your passport and then you have to you put your fingers and you're they're scanning and then it's like telling you to to make it make your finger a little bit more straight and then yeah. do this and do that and you see it all come up in real time and uh, and then it would print off a little form for you then you actually go talk to a, a human for five seconds you fill out the form they yeah. might ask you a question and then you leave so you're through you're through it you through password control in just minutes now if you're in the EU if you are an <laughs> EU member and you're like yeah, uh, I don't know if in the EU. So I just like go through like a machine that like just, just lets me through in five seconds into my country. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that in America. We're, we're very <laughs> slow. So I want to talk first about the fingerprinting technology because uh, Frank phones don't even have fingerprint scanners anymore. I have like the latest uh, uh, Pixel phones or whatever, and and all and my iPhones. They're just scanning my my eyes and doing all this stuff. Why is finger technology and even in the airport, you know, um, is it good technology? Is it bad technology? Because uh, I have updates to the global entry since I just re-entered America in 2024. And let's just tell you, let me tell you something. They're no longer checking fingerprints uh, anymore. <laughs> but let's talk about fingerprint technology. Why was this chosen, Frank? Because you're a forensic expert. And yeah. is it good? Te- is it good technology? Because Apple's <laughs> over it, right? So I, I Apple's know. over it. It must, not, it must be garbage. <laughs> is fingerprinting good technology? Yes, as a police detective, um, I would say I don't think police detectives actually dust for fingerprints much anymore. Like, it's actually really hard to lift fingerprints off of a crime scene, especially because any object that's existed for more than a day on this planet Earth has fingerprints all over it. So, like, mm-hmm. unless 
the criminal spilled some paint, fell over, and then walked through an alley putting their fingerprints on everything. I don't think like um, fingerprints are good from the criminal investigative um, world. I think they're think uh, TV has overblown them there. But I never minded the fingerprint scanner on the iPhone. I thought it was a decent biometric um, security thing. I think all the security people are now rolling their eyes at me and screaming textbook answers about how easy they are to defeat and all that stuff. But I don't know. I thought I thought they were pretty good. Uh, we're talking about fingerprints, but um, I've also done the clear at the airport, and they use a different technology. So we'll we'll get into that too. But fingerprints i don't know uh i feel me personally i i I think it's a good tech i think it's stupid for criminal stuff um maybe the fbi can do something bad with it i don't know but i just don't care they they got my fingerprints when i was five and i guess your fingerprints really don't change as you age so i guess uh the u.s government has had my ticket for a while so whatever yeah, I actually am a huge fan of fingerprinting technology. I actually, uh, I, I think that obviously the uh, face unlock with your iPhone is really, really good. The Android Pixel stuff has it, and it's not as good, at least on the one that I have, the 4, which is an older device now, where I'm like, I wish I just had the fingerprint scanner. Or sometimes I just wish I had the fingerprint scanner as an option, like on the yeah. back of the phone. I think it would just be like a nice option because I always just want to like unlock it in a certain way. I don't always want to have the face unlock if it's not hundred percent accurate, obviously they added a lot of support for masks and, and your watch and all this other stuff. I think for me, I'm not, I'm not really sure if it's like, okay, one in 50 uh, million or one in 50 billion. Like those are very different odds or whatever the odds are fingerprint versus face unlock. But at the same time, if I can, if, if you can still just get into my phone via knowing my pin, right. <laughs> then yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like, the, the fingerprint's probably okay too, but I think it's always convenient. It's especially convenient, by the way, when I'm cycling to have a fingerprint unlock. It was actually one of my favorite uh, reasons uh, when I first had my first iPhone, switching from Android to iPhone was so simple because I still had the, the SE, still has the fingerprint unlock, and that was really nice. Yeah. And, and funnily enough, Heather has the iPad mini, and it has the fingerprint unlock, but it's on the power button yeah. on the iPad, which is like super I, weird and good, I guess. I, Fine. Not, I, I like that. I keep my iPad Pro in kind of no, a laptop version form, a, a landscape with a keyboard attached. And I'm always hitting the unlock button, which is on the left in that mode. And my hand is always covering the face ID camera. So Apple puts up mm. the little graphic. You're covering the face ID camera. If the un- if the power button was a fingerprint thing, I wouldn't have that issue. So I, yeah, I, you're convincing me this is the greatest technology ever. In fact, I was talking to and let's go with eight year old kid today, and we were complaining about passwords together. And it was funny Mm. because he brought up, um, I wish this had the fingerprint scanning thing. So even the kids, even the kids like fingerprint scanning. So hopefully it seems cool. It's like futuristic, (laughs) right? Like even on my my MacBook uh, Air, it has the fingerprint unlock and like it feels futuristic. And obviously we had fingerprints. I remember like the first time I saw a Windows laptop with like a little, (laughs) you know, the little fingerprint scanner. Like, whoa, this is mind boggling. Like, wow, this is like so cool. Yeah. And then. Yeah, you're kind of slowing and them silly, like go away, but then also still emerge on new different devices, which is fascinating too, like on the laptop, right? So yeah, I I like it on the laptop for sure for like when you, the screen gets locked or something like that for logging in, hundred percent love it. Um, where I think it goes wrong, this is such a nitpick. I don't know. Sorry, side tangent on a side tangent. Um, the autofill, the password autofill in Safari. So you know. Um, we can go to a website and it suggests a password. If you're on a non touch computer, you can just like hit enter and it fills in the password or you click the thing. But if you're on a touch computer, you have to go and touch the little fingerprint sensor. Fine. Mm-hmm. It's fine. But the other trick is you cannot move the mouse away from the little menu that pops up. If you move the mouse away from it, the little fingerprint scanner doesn't do a darned thing. And so I find that it's, 
is it more security? I don't know if it's more security because on a computer without it, it's definitely easier on a computer without it to enter passwords. I don't feel like it's actually providing security or not, but um, whatever. It, it's still kind of fun to touch the computer in order to buy things. Yeah, no, I agree. I I have I was just on my Mac. It's the same. Like I was logging to every site, and I was like, oh, especially if you're doing like. I'll do like financial planning. So it's like logging, like all the, account yeah. account and log and log and and log. And you're like, okay, I get it. Like, but like maybe like keep my, keep my key store unlocked for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. I don't know if I'm yeah. it was like in the same session, same tab. I don't know. Uh, so anyways, this technology, Frank is no longer used, mm. um, at global entry. Fingerprints are gone. Sad. Uh, have you realized this? No, I haven't because I honestly, <laughs> I went to easy to travel to countries <laughs> on the last time I left the country. So I didn't have a need to use my global entry the last time. So I'm still, I'm still waiting to use it. And now I'm all sad because I don't think I know where my card is. So how am I supposed to global entry now, James? Well, there was an intermediate step into where we are at today. And the intermediate step was that I think that the the global entry technology officers are like, hey, we got to be at least at least a little bit better than than, you know, the iPhone. Like we got to oh. you know, try to be better than the iPhone. So they're like, we're going to get rid of the fingerprint scanners, but we're still going to have you scan your passport. Right. So we're going to yeah. have you scan your passport and then we're going to. Uh, also take a photo of you and uh, a human will verify that you are the person that that's where they're at basically at this point uh, or not or they were at this was in this is 2020 2022 talk I think even 2021 2022 talk so you'd go up to the kiosk and you fill out questions right so this is the other thing too is uh, the other technology was progressing and what I noticed and Heather noticed is that you'd get into SeaTac uh, internationally and the global entry line would actually sometimes be longer than the non-global entry line. And this is a big problem. You do not want that, right? <laughs> because then what's the advantage of global entry? It's like the CSA pre-line where it's like, okay, like, I guess I'm going to wait an extra five minutes now because in the pre-check line, because I want to keep my shoes on, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I don't want to body scan every five seconds. But this yeah. was a the technology. They got rid of the scanners, but you still would scan your passport and then you say, oh, I'm on this flight. I didn't do these things. This was short lived technology. because I, I don't even know what they were doing. But you would t they would just take a photo. And, <laughs> and then it was one of those things where they would take a photo of you, but it's like you're at Costco. So it's all in black and white and it's all pixely matrix. -y. But then they would also take a photo of you, but they didn't tell you that three, two, one photo. They would just take a photo of you. So all my photos were like me looking down or like, <laughs> eh, like what's going on? I got, oh, I just got off a 15 hour flight. I look great. <laughs> they would do this stuff. And then yeah. you would go and you'd go talk to a person. They're like, James, James. Yep. Cool. Where did you come from? Oh, I came from Fit Helsinki. Boom. Go like this, right? Not anymore, Frank. 2023 global entry technology. We walked and they're all brand new high tech they're like glowing whoa it's like a lightsaber <laughs> right it's like someone had budget for lighting effects right they're like oh the, what they also saw is like oh, we got to up our game we got to be tr try to be better than the iphone mm -hmm. and we also need to incorporate some of this cool lighting technology that video game streamers have so we need it to be glowing and pulsating hexagons <laughs> right hexagons it's like everything's hexagony and it's like two, 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 triangles it's like a part it's like a, a edm concert oh, like at the, <laughs> now finding the global entry area they've moved it again so why not move it but so there are these little, little these little like blue kiosks that are like popping out of the ground but they're shorter not like ah. big tall things mm. like two, two, two. and you walk up to and it's all like it's like look here <laughs> while i play some dubstep look here while i play dubstep, dubstep. <laughs> And it's a, it's like look here, and it's like proceed, like uh, that's oh, it. Now see? you you walk you walk up, fine. Proceed. Hashtag fine. Boom. And then you do get in another line. You get into another line, and it's in a short little line where there's one one global entry officer, custom border up uh, thing. Wait, wait. And they call your name out. Oh darn. Okay. Yeah. So 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 th I, when you I'm go just up hoping, to the global I'm, I'm entry line, James, that this is all just to get a high five. Are they just going to high five you? Do they call it your name? You James, did it. James, welcome back to America. <laughs> high five. It was. So you walk up to the line and yeah, they just call out people's names. They say, James, <laughs> James, clear, Heather, clear, whatever. <laughs> Boom, go, go, go. Right. And then you just go through it. High now, five. here's the thing, Frank. 
No, but I have also done the clear sign up uh, at one point. I've had them delete all of my data. This is pre-security breach. I had them delete all my data. I said, delete all of it. Uh, I did the free trial. I don't need that you're clear. Scan this. I, I never gave the I never gave the US government any other they took a they took one photo of me, Frank, <laughs> when I did the photos in the renewal on a Logitech C920 camera. Right. Okay. Way back in the day. Right. Uh, 1080p resolution. That that's yeah. what they take the photos on and they have. So I, I understand like when they in the previous version would take a photo of me, they would bring up the photo. Okay, someone's checking. Like it's like when they, they look at your, you know, photo ID when you're going through the security. But now, Frank. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if it's a global scan, facial scan, whatever. I have much longer hair now, which is a no photos Yeah, in, in this technology. And that's where we're at today. Like you look at the camera and it's not like show. It's not like it's not like they show a feed. And it's like, you know, what they wanted to do, what I wanted them to do is like, which would have been cool is like have the kiosk and it's like, look at the camera and it's all like your face comes up and it's like too, too analyzing. And it's like, <laughs> you know, they Probably didn't do won. any of that. That would have no. been really cool. Hollywood, all Hollywood. Well, no, there's and it's just like is an old school, like, you know, 2D graphic that's like processing and it's like a person thinking and it's like, mm, yeah, it's like proceed. And that's it. So that's where we're at. I have no idea what technology is. What technology do you think that is? Oh, I can guess. I don't know, but I, I would love to guess. Guessing is fun. Um, I, I do have to say probably everyone in at least New Zealand and Australia are rolling their eyes because they had cool face uh, taking picture technology also when I rolled through. So it's nice that America's catching up with the world. Uh, gosh, what are they doing? Um, I mean, A, they could just be passing you through. You could have just won the lottery. You, you get a free pass. Welcome to America, James. Um, yeah. <laughs> probably the system isn't doing that, though. It, it, it's tricky. Um, they could be doing, if, if it's a neural network, it's a problem of they have one or two or three pictures of you in a database somewhere. Um, those have been, <laughs> oddly enough, we call it fingerprinting. Great segue into all this kind of stuff. <laughs> but you run a neural network on that image and you can, it's not compression because you can't restore the image from it, but it brings it down into like a little hash code. It hashes the image, mm. but it's often called a fingerprint. It's called a latent space in all the neural network kind of talk. And what's neat is they can take a picture of you and if these neural networks are trained well, they can, um, if you look like the same person, they'll give you a thumbs up match. If you look like a different person, they'll give you a thumbs down match, uh, regardless of beards. Like there are databases out there of the same person over time uh, with different photography modes, with different hairstyles and all that kind of stuff. So if they did a good job, they would train on a giant database like that. Being the government, I have no idea. They they probably subcontracted it out to a company, and hopefully they did a good job doing all this kind of stuff. Uh, I do hear that the programmer should add more snazzy features to the scanning part, but um, I don't know if it's actually doing what you're saying it's doing. If it's uh, looking up your passport ID, grabbing some photography from you that's been fingerprinted from some server, taking a picture of you, running that same fingerprint on the recent picture of you, comparing them, giving a thumbs up or thumbs down based on a threshold. That's probably what they're doing. Um, if not, I'd be a little bit impressed, actually, because that's how I would solve it. And of course, my solution is the right way to do it. But uh, either way, it's good. I'm happy to see America catching up with the world. And it's freaky, because that means Walmart is going to be doing the same thing. And all the stores will be doing the same thing. Yeah, who was it? I was at because it's kind of like an airport technology <laughs> episode. Yeah, I guess. But I was at, um, you know, the Hudson Hudson News. Yeah, of course. Like, you know, the everyone the, knows the, and yeah, loves everyone. Hudson News. Hudson News. That's where if you're not American, that's where you buy your, your crisps and your chips and your soft M &Ms. drinks. Uh, Bottle of water. M&Ms that are eight eighteen dollars. They have a Save pay with everyone. palm. <laughs> you, you, you register your palm Great. with a credit card. Great. So you're, they, they do a scan of your of your palm and you yeah. can wave to pay with your palm. <laughs> pay wave. You know, in, in all of Europe, <laughs> people, they just tap. They just tap their card. Everyone yeah. just taps like we haven't even we haven't for some reason in America, we haven't even nailed tap to pay. Like we're close. It's man. not universally supported. It's not universal. But I feel <sighs> like we're, we're above the 80 percent line. I feel like 
we're we're at the point where I try now, you know, where I almost we're expect at, we're, it. We're at, yeah, I would say yes and no. Even my local <laughs> grocery store it can barely take a chip, okay? <laughs> I would say this. I haven't swiped a credit card. I haven't swiped a credit card in a long time. I have still in, input a chip, right? But yeah. like gas stations, grocery stores, mm-hmm. like, you know, all the way behind. I, I, I am now, when I go to my bank, I don't put it in my card. I tap my card on on the little reader, but yeah. that's even newer. And that's not even in all of the ATMs because, you know, what are they going to update all of their Diebold machines? Like, no, they're not going to do that. But when you went, I was in Europe, you know, and I'm, all of our European listeners, yeah. which I think are probably the majority of our listeners, are just, again, rolling their eyes because <laughs> a lot of places are only card, right? There is no yeah. cash. There is no anything else. It's only tap to pay, right? And that's it. Um, um, and, and that's it. We can't even nail that. But yet we're like, let's pay with our palm uh, <laughs> for some reason, you know, Hudson News. But yeah. I think that was mind boggling. I think what's interesting about the global security check is that, yeah, you're right. Like, I, 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 when I went through it, when we went through it, and it was really fast because it did process. It sat there and it processed for like 20 seconds, 15 seconds. And I was like, well, I wonder what is, is it doing? A, like, is it doing an <laughs> NCIS, like, look up where it's like, it's I, I imagine my, the foot. <laughs> The, the photo of my face is like going through the database of every single American. And yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's right? not what's I happening. don't know. No. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, what? OK, so so it's taking a photo of my face. It's hashing yeah. it and then yeah. it's going through an algorithm. And it's like looking for a likeness check. Highest percentage. Oh, James is the highest percentage. Go. Is, is that what you think is happening? Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't like using hash, though, because programmers mm-hmm. listen to us. So um, it's not a hash because a rash should be random data. So it's really just um, um, an embedding. I believe people are starting to call them now also. So let's call it an embedding. Um, It's just um, you're reducing the photo down to a list of numbers. But it's a good list of numbers because if you just compare the lists of numbers, if the numbers are similar, the images are probably similar. The faces are probably similar. So hopefully it's it's zeroing in on face stuff too. It's not just an image processing one, but it's based on face data. So ideally what they're doing is you enter your passport um, number. They download these embeddings of you, embedded James. They download embedded James. They take a modern recent photograph of you. They run the embedding algorithm on that and they compare the embeddings. If they match, great. If not, you're out. So that's how I think they would work because no, you cannot uh, search a database uh, that will that will not work. What what you can do is make a web request to a server, give me the James embedding, run the embedding on your own local stuff, and just compare the two. Well, and and uh, my assumption is they know every single person that is coming in that day, right? So no, that's it. They, it the database size. No. No, I could never. Um, no, it, it's most likely keyed off of passport identity, most likely. Um, who knows? Like uh, passport systems mm. are old and archaic. Um, I remember even when like the United States was like everything felt like it was still on paper and we were using crayons for everything. I remember going yeah. through Israel where they had computers and digital photography and all that kind of stuff because uh, they took uh, security seriously. And we didn't, we used crayons and paper, but it, it was quite a shock to see um, just how organized the system could be even many, 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 many years ago. And so how that system works today, I imagine they just have wonderful photography on all of us stored in some server, mm-hmm. probably hosted by Google somewhere. <laughs> probably. Yes. Well, okay, so they have, have to know, they have to know, <laughs> some server somewhere, yeah. some AWS, Google, <laughs> Azure cloud uh, out there. And I am looking at, this is an article. This is new. So the article at least came out about a year ago mm-hmm. and, and, and it started at DFW and IH, which is in Houston. So Texas ones there. And they say, all they say are facial biometric kiosks. That's all they say. Next Sweet. generation. <laughs> that's it. And they're pleased to announce this. And, th- and that's just a streamline. They don't tell you about anything about how this says. It says the new paperless, which is, by the way, it's paperless, so no paper. And go global entries, saving trees. Um, it says utilizes facial comparison and a mobile officer technology by confirming identity and making an admission decision without producing a receipt. Mm-hmm. This process will continue to increase contactless pr- processing and reduce environmental footprint. 
So you're going green global entry. Yeah. So it's not, so they say biometric, it's facial, facial comparison recognition. So this isn't new, new technology, but, but you're saying is probably the algorithms and the models that they're sending this through are making it so it's a lot faster and more efficient than ever. Yeah. I, just I mean, that, that, that would be the right way to do it. It's really quite possible. They're just giving you a thumbs up every time. And then they're just leaving it up to the officer to give you a thumbs down. Uh, it really could like, just oh, be this is this is eighty percent, James. It yes. could be taking a picture of you and uploading it to a server so that they have a record of you coming through there. So if you do something naughty in the USA, they can be like, "Not you. You're not allowed through the border anymore." It could be that mm. simple. They could just be giving you a thumbs up. But if it is security, <laughs> it should be doing something vaguely, like I said, making sure that your face actually matches your uh, known face, something like that. Yeah. And if you, and you know, once we got through, I was like, well, that was like really strange because like, yeah, I haven't given the U S government that many photos of my face Mm -hmm. like before, like even when I did the global entry, like they took like a photo and then I thought about it and I'm like, actually (laughs) I've probably given the U S government a lot of photos of my face. If you think about it, all my, all my driver's license, (laughs) all my passports and passport renewals, uh, every time I've gone through uh, customs before, like and even border, they take a photo of you or they have a thing on a webcam. Right. So all of those times and then obviously even doing the global entry. So in that regard, as a 37 year old person, I have to imagine that they probably at least have 40, 50, 60 photos of just me over time. Yeah. That I've given them by just <laughs> going through their lines. And that I have to imagine is enough data. Like uh, how many photos do you think they need? Is it one photo, two photos to, to give? Oh, literally uh, one, literally one. You just well, okay. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Honestly, multiple yeah. makes it harder. Um, oh, yeah, but because because you're doing a matching, right? So what if they have three photos of you that are very different? You know, one's mm. bearded and you're sad. One's clean shaven and you're happy. You know, it's you're just tripping up the network now. It's easier to just compare against Got one. Uh, yeah, I. And I do wonder because, um, yeah, so I was using clear because I hate lines. So I, I paid for a little bit of clear and they do just the face scan thing too. I have no idea what they're doing. They say it's retina. I don't know if they're actually yeah. doing the retina or not, but it would be actually the same process of no one can like. In the 80s, they would like align the retina and they would do the graphics like you want. The green lasers would shoot out and it would like scan your retina. But in the modern days, you would do it the same way I was saying you would do it with the face. You create an embedding of the retina that is representative of the retina. They have the other retina scan of you and embedding. They can put the embeddings. That would be the, again, the easiest way to do it. It is funny though. Um, you you talking about like searching a big database of every face of every American who's ever gone through every airport. Um, if you do have these little neural network embeddings, you can do uh, what's usually called uh, KNN, K nearest neighbors. Um, find find me the ten most similar faced people to James possible, and. This is why I should not be allowed to work at any of these security companies, because how could you not run that query? I, w- I would love to see of all the faces in the world, which one looks most similar to me and that kind of stuff. I would abuse my position. Therefore, don't give me a job at the TSA. But uh, it would still be a total trip and totally fun to do that kind of stuff. Bad for security. I'm sure it's not possible, but wouldn't that be fun? Well, I am fascinated if if uh, what the global entry officer sees too on their end, right? Like, do they see just, oh, here, it, it's 98% James, like, please validate. <laughs> Are they saying like, oh, it could be James, or Frank or or Gary. We don't, you know, <laughs> you decide and like you pick an option. You pick an option. Is it Gary? I don't know. Yeah. But again, they know who's traveling on what day. So they should have a fairly good yeah pull set to go from yeah i was always curious about the clear because they do they 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 do your retinal scan facial right. scan type of stuff and you know similar i'm assuming it's the same with the palm is like if you have something that is unique right whether it's a fingerprint whether it's your palm whether it's your retinals whether it's your entire face right because like there but i think what my whole thing is like with the apple face unlock it's it's like depth sensors, right? Like it's like a depth yeah. map of your face. Right? Yeah. 
it doesn't seem like any of the technology that any of these companies are no. using are as advanced well, or as what's in this phone, right? Uh, Am I wrong? No, no, you're not. You're absolutely right. But that's the job of that human physical officer there, because I'm hmm. imagining you totally could spoof it unless they do have 3D cameras on them. I really doubt it. I mean, every one that I saw had a Logitech camera on it. Um, you could yeah. take a picture of George Bush and look and put George Bush in front of the camera and it would register that as George Bush because, of course, it's an image of George Bush. It would do a perfect match. Yeah. So Apple put in um, 3D stuff to make sure that there's at least a 3D object in front of the camera that's matching the image that the camera is receiving. So if you want to fake out face ID, you actually have to go through the effort of building a sculptured <laughs> face to fake it out. Um, if you came up to a security line and put a fake face picture over the camera, pretty sure the security guard's going to tackle you. So uh, yeah. you won't have to deal with any other problems that day. You'll be you'll be forced <laughs> to deal with that problem. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so this gives me a better analysis because I was always wondering like how each of those works. But I think the interesting part is that actually the technology that and what they were doing with the fingerprint, in, you know, fingerprinting is just the same they're doing with your face. It's a different data set. So yeah. instead of running your fingerprints, which is what they're taking photos of before, skip, analyzing it, giving it a validation check. Now they're just doing it with your face and streamlining that process pretty much so there's one validation. Um, yeah. And yeah, it would be pretty annoying if if Apple needed to approve every face unlock in real time and a human needed to verify it to me. So that makes sense. Well, there's the 3D map on there where, yeah, there's a physical person there that's doing the validation. <laughs> now, here's one thing that's really, really, really also interesting is that in America, America, when you go into the airport, right, that's like us, me getting out of the airport. When you go into the airport, you would give the them the, you would scan your ticket so that it would pull up different information. You give them your driver's license, boom, boom, boom. Now at many airports, you don't even need to give them this. You don't need to even scan your your ticket. They're just like, give us give us the ID. Right. Mm -hmm. So here's the ID. They know that you're flying that day and it does that stuff a little bit faster. Yeah. Now in Europe, in Europe, Frank, there's not even a person. There's not even <laughs> you here's a, here. And this is. And maybe this is newer in Europe. I don't know, but going through Scandinavia, through through Norway and through um, um, Finland, we were taking a lot of flights. We took like, you know, 10 flights in like 10 days. We we're just all, all these little hoppers to, to get around the different areas. But every airport was the same. There's a big go through security, right? And in America, we're like, oh, we're going to go through security, get there five hours ahead of time. In Europe, no, it's just you just go unless you're in Heathrow. Heathrow is probably always <laughs> terrible. But any airport, like nasty. Helsinki and Oslo, it, they're fine. But here's the thing is, Frank, you just go and you just scan your boarding pass and and you just you go through, you just walk through and then you go through security. Boom, boom, boom. When you get to your gate, you, you're going to board the plane. Guess what you do? You just scan. You, you scan your passport. You not even sorry. Mm -hmm. You don't scan your passport. You scan your ticket with your QR code and the gates open, right? We don't even have gates. We don't have little things no. like you in a speed line and just let me scan it. It's like this. But here's the thing, Frank, how do they know it's me? Like, how do how do like, I could just take a photo <laughs> of and this is what puzzles me. And maybe I don't understand airport technology in it. But then like I, I and maybe it's someone that works for some European Union airport. Let me know how this works. But, you know, I get my QR code on my phone and I, I go, that's me, right? But couldn't I just take a screenshot of that and then just give it to you? And then couldn't you just walk through and get on the plane, Frank? Do they care who's on the plane? But they do, right? Like, and then when I get onto the plane, I don't even talk to a person. I just put the thing on. They just let me on the plane. Yeah. I've always, always wondered. I might, then now they're going to boot me out of, of all these, <laughs> these lines I'm talking about. I've always wondered, Frank. Also, once you're through security... <laughs> Let's say you and I are traveling together, but let's say you're <laughs> let's say let's say you're let's say you're going to San Diego mm -hmm. and I'm going to Denver. OK, but the flights are around the same time. Okay. So we're both through <laughs> we're both through security. Yeah. Couldn't we just give each other our own ticket and couldn't we just swap places inside the airport? I mean, I know we scan it again. But where is it? Is there something else happening in, in the airports that I don't know about, like some other facial recognition? That's like, is am I just being scanned in real time all the time at the airport? And they're always validating where I'm at and tracking me all the time. 
Because I'm just saying, Frank. You're just saying, just hypothetical here, hypothetical. James, you're you're describing what I I fondly call the 1970s and the 1980s, <laughs> what I I call pre 9 11, how airports used to be. Of course, no. Okay, so. A, I bet you the airports wish they were tracking you in that way, but no, they're not. They, that's. Could you imagine running the servers to track people like that? Ugh, no one's got time yeah. for that. Yeah, you 100% could swap it. Don't do it. It's illegal or against your terms of service or something like that. Mm. I'm not your attorney, but don't do it. It's a little worse than theater hopping, I guess, than the theaters. Um no, I mean they got yes. tons of security, but I'd be like, I bet you a casino has way better human tracking security than an airport. You know, I bet you they know exactly what you're doing, every movement you've made. But I think the airports are they can barely keep the lights on in some circumstances. Um, yeah, I think you're pretty safe at, le- at least for now. But man, it, it does make you a pine for the 1970s and the 80s, where you really could just do all that. Now, that's very good for Northern Europe. I'm sure North America will get that technology in 20 or 30 years when we catch up with the rest of the world. Uh, it, it sounds wonderful. I, I remembered I went through something similar to like that. Uh, the only downside I would say is after doing a little bit of scanning, people stare at you. They give you the look and they just mm. look at you. So instead of talking to people, they just look at you. I'd almost rather just talk to the person, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think it's all, I think it's it's definitely improved um, from maybe even just five years ago. I think security was at its most terrible at airports, but some of the lines have smoothed out, um, especially with, like you said, the boarding passes now can get you through half of half of all the nonsense yeah yeah i mean and i even i even i even think the the security lines have gotten a lot better but it's actually really interesting when we were in finland and heather made this great point is they had they had these they look like these huge crazy portal pods that were sending your bags through for like the scanners like Mm -hmm. all this stuff and i was like well that's crazy like this you know you know, obviously Finland's a big country, but it's not like the size of America, right? Where we just have this huge, crazy, but like all this stuff and they're like, oh, we're going through this. But I'm like, wow, this is cool. Their technology is so cool. And then Heather's like, yeah, but like, think about like how many airports does Finland have <laughs> that they need to outfit with, yeah. with these scanners compared to America and yeah. how many, how many different how many international you know, airports do we have? <laughs> so, exactly. Right. And how many non-internet and just domestic <laughs> ones that we have, like, they have to go and they have to upgrade these slowly. So like, yeah, there's obviously like even this global entry thing is that like two or uh, so many now, yeah. maybe airports there are, I even know it's at SeaTac. Like <laughs> it's a slow rollout, just like our tap to pay. Like yeah. you can't even get tap to pay in, in every, every place. But it's interesting to, to look at other countries to see them. Yeah. You know, just different mechanisms, right? Uh, and I, we're I, still taking off our shoes. Sorry, I was just thinking, um, but before we go, because we should wrap up our super technology oh, podcast yeah. here on airports. I think you're jet lagged and we're just going to keep talking about airports all night. Um, but I did have a running <laughs> theory going through my head, going through a few uh, recent modern airports. And I would love uh, anyone to give feedback if you actually do know anything about airport security. It felt like a lot of those um, picture taking things were like a double check service. So like you had entered the security process, it would take a picture of you. And then further along in the security process, it would take another picture of you. And I was wondering if it's a double Mm -hmm. picture for different reasons, customs versus immigration, who knows, things like that. Or was it actually just validating that you are still the same person you're claiming to be that you haven't done a document swap or something like that? Uh, I would love any feedback from anyone that knows that because that was a running theory I was (laughs) developing based solely on nothing other than, gosh, people are taking my picture a lot. I wonder what they're doing with all my pictures. Yeah, when we got on our flight to Finland for the first time, it was only one of the flights, um, but it had the you can participate in optional facial border check in or whatever. Right. So Mm -hmm. we didn't even have to scan or they didn't have to scan our thing. We just like looked at the camera and it's like, cool, James, uh, 36 F or whatever. Right. Uh, so it knew that, which was, which was pretty cool, but there was still a person there to revalidate hundred percent that it's really you or whatever. But I thought that was nifty, um, to, to speed up any getting through any lines. Yeah. Am I okay? I think I'm okay with them doing that because 
I'm already in a bubble, right? I think yeah. like the airport, I'm already in an airport bubble where they, to actually get into here, you need to verify your identity, right? So since I'm inside of this, I'm okay with this bubble. The question is, yeah, do we get to like fifth element where I'm like, you know, <laughs> here's how I'm like, you know, paying for, you know, paying and doing this stuff. Are they going to, you know, like well, world coin is a good example. You know, are you all caught up on world coin? Uh, no uh, stuff. Oh boy. So world coin is a crypto uh, currency yeah. uh, from Sam Altman that um, chat GPT open AI fame. Um, but world coin, it rolled out and your, key is your as a retinal scan basically uh. so you so that's your it's a global identity processing system so they were rolling out the world coin like registration it's a big controversy but they did a lot in like emerging markets to try to get like you know that's what they wanted to tackle they're like well we mm -hmm. want to want this to be payable and like make crypto easier so if you could do like fifth element like you know sc scans <laughs> or whatever you know that'd be easier but they were just giving away like you know fifty dollars oh geez but yeah they were just signing up <laughs> You know, a lot of, you know, a lot yeah, of people to, to, to yeah. in, 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 in coin or whatever. So world coin, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what do you, what, so to wrap this up for where do you, where, where do we see this going and what technology are you comfortable with? Not only for airport technology, but for global like payment technology going through stuff. Like, mm. are, are we still at a tap to pay? Are we at a you know, blink once for your visa, blink twice for your MasterCard. Oh, Amazon would love that, huh? I mean, already, if I say the wrong words, I've bought something and it arrives at the house. So <laughs> you have this classic capitalism we want to sell to you constantly. But then um, we're a heavily militarized society and we're scared for our own lives. So we we heavily favor security and safety and comfort. And so you got these battling things, capitalism and safety and comfort, and they're all vying for our time. And I think biometrics are here to stay because biometrics are, I think, good. Um, but maybe they should be multi-biometric. It should be face and retina and fingerprint. You know, I want the trifecta of security here. And so I, I personally don't have a problem with it. But security measures are always a generational thing, you know, what everyone's comfortable with shifts throughout time. You know, um, you're talking about people being paid to open a cryptocurrency account. People used to get paid to vote one way or another in U.S. elections, like literally pe people would go out and just hand you money and be like, vote for me. Here's 50 bucks. So we've always had. We've always shifted our what's acceptable and what's not. And I think uh, if someone's offering you 50 bucks to open an account, you should take it. And I think the biometric stuff is going to constantly shift. And there will always be the security people who say it's it's not good enough. But um, it's a working technology. You know, if, if the government's kind of trusting it, it's on all our laptops. It's a technology that's here to say, stay. It was a fun, fascinating, cool thing in the 80s. And then it became a little bit scary in the 90s and the noughties. But I think it's just it's just one of those technologies like Bluetooth, you know, love it or hate it. It's just kind of here now. And it's we're good yeah. with it. Yeah. I will say this to wrap it up, too, is we set a really cool hotel in Oslo. <laughs> But it's pretty modern and it's like newer, newer and tech modern. And you have to do to do everything through a mobile app um, to the check in process, scanning your, your passport and then even unlocking your door <laughs> yeah. uh, is all through your mobile phone. This app called the guest app. And I would say that I was kind of OK with it, but I couldn't imagine like my parents doing <laughs> it because to unlock the doors, you can't just use like, and they didn't do use NFC. Oh, they didn't. Uh, they, they use Bluetooth. Oh, golly. And every time, like from doing the elevators, like to go up the elevator, you got to take out your phone. You got to say unlock door to go to the laundry room. You got to do that every time you go in. And like the boot up process. Yeah. I, I had my first, I tried it on my Android phone and I was like, this is like unusable. It's just like too slow to boot up the, the Bluetooth <laughs> process, whatever they were doing. Yeah. I know it's not, I know it doesn't take that long people I know because like I've done this stuff, but like what happens is like the door needs to also save energy. So it needs to like, kind of like turn on and then it yeah. needs to do a thing. And then it's like, okay, I just wanted, like, there's some things like I'm an old cranky man 
there's something like it's better just tap to pay. Right. And here's a cool thing. We were renting a car in Bergen and we drove out to Flom and I need to return the car. And this was really great is that there was a little, a uh, little, uh, a bunch of tiny little boxes we needed to do after our car drop. And the, how I'm used to it is like you just like put it in a magical box and like mm-hmm. hope someone finds it. <laughs> you no, know, this one was cool. It's like, oh, enter, enter uh, your last name and then enter like the code that's on the the key. And then a little door opens like, you know, when uh-huh. you go to like Home Depot or you go to Walmart, Amazon. there's like a or the or the Amazon pickup, you know, the <laughs> yeah. door pops open. Yeah. Give me that technology. That's really cool. Like, how come I can't just go to the hotel? It does a facial recognition scan and like enter like a confirmation code. And it's like, yeah. here's your key. Pop it out. Right. I had, a, you know, you have to keep going to so sometimes technology to a downfall is bad. So I asked the, the they don't even have a person at the door. It's just I had asked the bartender because that's who yeah. uh, this. I'm like, how many times is I'm like, how many times do people get confused about the app? And he's like, all the time. Yeah, is like, like all the time. Yeah. I'm like, so good, good and good and bad. Right. But yeah. I'm like imagining I was like, oh, but if if it makes my life faster and easier, because it seems like, good, like oh, I want to use even when I do the Marriott, you can okay. you can register your phone to do. I don't even do it. I don't, I don't need to do that. I'm stopping just, you, James. I, let me in easily. We are, we will do the hotel technology episode next time. We're covering airport technology today. <laughs> Let's cut her off. I think everyone's enjoyed Delirious James for long enough. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for for uh, allowing me to uh, talk about airport technology uh, because it's fun as technology progresses on our phones <laughs> and our lives everywhere we're at. If you want us to talk about a specific piece of technology that you're fascinated in, write into the show. Go to MergeConflict.fm or check out our new YouTube channel at YouTube.com forward slash at MergeConflictFM. Uh, we'll put that in the show notes for y'all or just go to MergeConflict.fm. There's links to all of our places that you can find us. If you like us, leave us a review on the Internet. Let us know what you think by leaving a comment anywhere that you can leave a comment. But that's going to do it for this week's Merge Conflict Elongated Airport Edition, just like uh, hopefully the elongated sleep I'm going to get tonight. Um, but until next week, I'm James Montemagno. And I'm Frank Krueger. Thanks for watching and listening. Peace.